Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam Raby, Toby Beagle is in the background here, and this is my review of Eurovision 2022 Grand Final and as a whole. So let's get into it. So what do I think about the broadcasters, um, the Italian broadcasters this year? I don't think they've done a great job. Um, personally, the fan packages for the OGA network for the fan clubs was released in March, I think. This is meant to be done by January. Now, we all know that preconceptions of Italians are that they leave everything to the last minute, but they kind of did that this year. Um, I can understand for a certain extent because the worries were around a virus that was going around, which I can't name as YouTube will take this video off. So I can understand that to a certain extent, but they would have known that and they should have planned for that a lot better than they had. Then it comes to the staging. Um, the Sun was really a big oversight by not just the Italian broadcasters, but the EBU as a whole. This should have gone into the planning where they must have known how long it took to move. So once it broke, they, they should have fixed it or just dismantled it and not had it there at all. It was a real big oversight of planning and it really did damage certain performances like um, Denmark and to a lesser extent Estonia. A lot of performances did miss this, but then it did heighten some some performances. Let's look at, at Switzerland. You know, I'm a, I was a big fan of Switzerland anyway, but to have that blackened part out with just the lights moving, it really made that performance feel more intimate on what is a very big stage. So there were ups and downs about the sun. Um, moving on to the voting irregularities of semi-final two. Um, if you look at the details in, in depth, um, ESC United, uh, Matt, did a very good video of the in-depth analysis. And there clearly was a pack that formed and the broadcasters you know they might feel aggrieved because they might not have known about it it could have just been the jurors who did this pact and um what do i think should happen in future that those jurors all those jurors should be banned from ever either competing or being a jury or involved in any way shape or form with the contest in the future because what they've done is brought their countries and their broadcasters into disrepute where the EBU could now find them. I hope they don't, um, because certain broadcasters have come out, like Romania, who may not be in the contest any, anymore, which would be a shame. Um, I know Montenegro have done the same as well. They've come out really against what has happened. Um, I believe that these broadcasters are all innocent. I don't think they had anything to do with this mass pact, but the pact was there. And I think that comes back to the jurors themselves. And they all should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Um, I really like the Georgia song, but that heavily got put their votes up. And then you can say in the final, um, United Kingdom, would they have finished second? Would they have won the jury vote? I don't think they would without these aggregated results because two of them did actually get the. 12 given to the United Kingdom when they probably would have only got 10 then you're looking at other results would they have got them you know we, we don't actually know um I know Ukraine did get a 12 from one of from Georgia I believe it was was reported but their 12 exactly went to the United Kingdom instead so were these aggregated results in the final or were they just disputed ones taken out um you know we, we just we don't know the raw facts behind that so let's get to the final i'll run through every country from bottom to top because you know there's going to be a big ramble at the end and um, 25th germany um malik harris with rock stars 25th six points um i'll i think they would have been hoping for double figures and that would have been a result for them at the end of the day um the song was just forgettable um i like the song i personally like the song but there were better songs out there that everyone liked. I think they fell into the gap of where, maybe not as bad, but where James Newman went last year for the UK, where it was a good song, but nobody really rated it above anything else. And that's what seemed to be the problem. And then the staging just killed it. For, but that's a different matter. 
Um, 24th. Who finished 24th? It was France. Alvin and Ahiz with Fulen. This was a disgrace. How did this finish 24th? I don't know. Um, I had high hopes for this song. Um, it was consistently in my top five. And I was gutted to see this fall so flat. Um, the national form performance was better. Um, something just didn't connect on the stage. And I could feel that to a certain extent. But did I think it would finish bottom two? No. Um, and that was a shame. If you wonder what I'm doing, Mac, I've got it on my TV screen above the camera. So I am looking at what I'm looking at. Um, 23rd was Iceland's sister with Mit Hakadin Sel. And I've butchered that name. 20 points, 10 from the public, 10 from the juries. Um, that's very rarely seen where the public and juries give the same amount of points. Um, you know, I, out of this and Portugal, I did prefer this. I connected with this song more. The song seemed was the harmonies were perfect um, and it worked. Don't know why it didn't connect and Portugal did. Um, we'll come to Portugal later. Um, but, you know, this was an Icelandic song, which is great to see Icelandic language back in the final. It was deserved. 22nd, um, the first place country, Czech Republic. Um, we are Domi with lights off. Um, this is not a shock. The EBU seems to do this. Whoever qualifies in semi final two in last place tends to be the um, starters of the of the final. Um, it's a shame it had to be Czech Republic. Um, if they wanted to do something special, they should have put Ukraine on first. And then see how many public votes they get. And then you get all of this political stuff, which I'll mention later. Will Domi um, is very well. Um, shocked they finished 22nd. I thought they would be top 15 at least. Um, but, you know, it was a very hard field. 21st, Finland, Erasmus, Jezebel. Well, um, they probably had the poorest vocals throughout the week. Um, Lowry was not great. But to finish 21st with 38 points as well as Czech Republic there with 38 points. Um, you know, I think that was probably where it should have finished. Um, the Raz was got to the final probably on reputation alone. And I'm now being joined by Toby the Beagle, a big Rasmus fan. It's no idea who they are. And, um, you know, it was a good song. But did it deserve higher? Probably not. 20th, now we go up to Armenia next. This was a shock. Rosalind and Snap to finish. Come up here, Toppers. To finish so low down. I I couldn't believe that this was missed so badly. Because if Ed Sheeran wrote this song, this would be a worldwide hit. Um, and I was so gutted for Rosalind because the performance was unique. We've not seen anything like that since, and it was just not thought upon. Any other year, it probably would have done a lot better. Um, unfortunately, this political year, it did not. Um, next up, 19th place was Belgium. Jeremy Makise with Miss You. No, this should not have even been in the final. Looking at the semi-final two, the Ireland were nowhere near qualifying. Was was a travesty because that song was quality. Um, this song, yes, he's a good singer. I can see why the jury's backed him heavily. But did he really deserve to be in the top 20? <laughs> Not really. The song went nowhere. And they just liked his vocals, which is a shame. Um, 18th, uh, Romania, Wuss, with Lamini. Uh, this did very well with the public. It was expected to. Uh, 65 points in the end. So if you wonder why I keep touching my phone, I've got a bit of a headache coming on, which is the worst thing to do when you're trying to do a video. Um, I'm going to move my other screen up. Wait. The, um... Any other year, any other spot in the running order, this would have done so much better. Toby is back, as you can see. You want to come up? Come on in. Come on. Sorry for the distractions, guys. Um... You know, this was a good song. You could hear it was a good song in the hall. Everyone was singing to this. 
And to be honest, it kind of worked in the running order. You had We Are Domi, which didn't get, a, you know, they didn't get as big reception as Romania did. Um, I hope they stay in the contest. You know, Romania songs are generally good. Um, let's hope that they um, will be back next year. And, you know, worse, I wish you all the best with your career. Um, 17th was, I can't even see. Oh, Marius Bear with Boys Do Cry. I'm going to move over because you are a big bear yourself. Yes, you are. Um, Switzerland. I love this song from start to finish. It was a shot qualified because I, even though I wanted it in the final, I didn't think it would get there. And the juries were the reason why I got through. Zero points of the public here, which was a shock. This clearly did not connect with the audience at home, which is a great shame. Um, if they get 78 points off the juries, was fantastic for Marius um, and was really well deserved. Um, you know, this, this song was quality and least it got the respect that it, this song deserves off the juries. 16th. Um, is Azerbaijan, Nadia Rustami, Fade to Black. Uh, 103 points of the juries and three of the public. I think the public had this right. Um, yes, he's got a very good voice and you can't, you can't discredit him for that. But this song was not memorable in the slightest. Maybe it helped him being next to Lithuania and Belgium in the running order. It stood out a bit more than it probably would have anywhere else. Um, it's just a shame that this took a lot of the jury vote. 103 points. You know, that's 5% of the jury vote. Just under. It really didn't deserve... They must, have, they must have appreciated his voice. 15th. Australia, Sheldon Riley, not the same. Again, another jury favourite. 123 points. Yes, 123 points of the juries, two of the public. Public didn't respond to this. We all know where the public vote went to. Um, Sheldon Riley is a great singer. Um, whether you like his shouty vocals or not, turn up to you. I really appreciated him because trying to sing that song myself, I know how hard it is. <laughs> so, uh, yes, um, he will do well in his career and I hope Australia come back with something next year. Um, Lithuania was... 14th, and 14th in the running order, Monica Liu and Sentimental. Now, I really did appreciate Monica in the in the press conferences and interviews. You could see she was loving being there. And I'd hoped that she'd done well just for her, because she is the best thing about this song. You know, great to see Lithuanian language in the final as well. Um, that could have been the first time ever. And finished 14th for 128 votes. You know, I was... Shocked to see the amount of votes that this song got. Um, and I think Monica must take some heart in that because she would have known she was not going to do well. But to finish 14th in 25 countries, you didn't place in the bottom 10. That's an achievement. And hopefully she sees it as that. Top half of the right-hand side of the board, it was great to see. Um, and I know Monica will have a great career. Coming from this. 13th, Estonia, Stefan, Hope. Now, this song really was affected by the um, sun not working. Stefan did do very well performing last as well. Let's not forget that it's closing the show. He did well. I think that was a great performance. Um, 13th, man about where it should have got. 12th, Ockman, River for Poland. Now, one of the. Um, Ockman. 151 points. I thought would have been top 10. I honestly thought Ockman was going to break into that top 10. Um, you see some countries that probably didn't deserve to be top 10 coming up. Um, you know, River, you know, got so much momentum when it came out. And then other countries started sending their representatives. And Ockman just fell from the path. Um, a lot of similar men, you know, Sam Ryder, Ockman, um who are uh, Nadia from Azerbaijan um, all have great falsettos and people were only going to pick one and we know who they picked um, 
you know, Auckland, any other year would have been top 10. 11th, um, Netherlands, Esteen with De Diepte. You know, being in between those two of the top three and to get 11th, no shame in that. Um, she's 11th in the running order and finished 11th overall. 171 points. She did Netherlands proud and I hope that she knows that because she's, you know, the staging was very minimal, which really worked well for the song. It reminded me of Sana Nielsen's song um, in 2014, Undo with the beams of light, it just worked. Um, and you've got that hook in the song as well, there. And she performed it well. You know, no shame in finishing 11th. 10th was, who knows 10th? Norway, Sub Wolfer, give that wolf a banana. Now we know this would have won a public vote any other year. Um, Seventh in the running order probably hurt it a tiny bit. Um, heavily rumoured it is Ben Adams from A1. Um, maybe it wasn't um, the chaps, uh, Yelvis. You know, I, I enjoyed this song. It was very good. Uh, maybe that hurt France being next to it. But, you know, the, the song was well choreographed. Um, yes, the song was a bit silly, but it over produced itself to be a good song and that's what you need ninth now this is a surprise portugal maro sadade sadade now everyone knows who's been looking at my channel i was not a fan of this song and to get to ninth with 207 points congratulations portugal you did well um i personally still don't see the appeal of this song um i think it was right people weren't to clap because I know some people online said well everyone clapped on Serbia's but why aren't they done it on Portugal because it's two different songs Serbia needed that participation to work this song didn't um, enough left for me to say um, I am running over it's 17 minutes great eighth Greece my winner Amanda Giorgiardi Chenford will die together I had this down as a nailed on winner bit disappointed to finish eighth um, this was a great song it really is. Her vocals throughout the week were spot on every single time. Maybe you could have had another dancer on stage. Maybe to help out a tiny bit, but did it need it? Probably not. Um, disappointing this finish eighth. Um, man is going to have a great career. Seventh, um, the real winners of the public vote. Moldova, Zoop the Zoop and the Adahov brothers with Little Train or Ten Jetor. Um We all knew that Zoop the Zoop were going to do well. Let's be honest, they always do whenever they come to Eurovision. They're experienced hands now. Don't want to see them back. Yeah. <laughs> Were we a bit let down by staging? Yes, because everyone expected the train to be on stage. But why did this do really well? I think it got 11 points. No, it got 239 of the public, which meant it got 14 points off the juries. Which again, they killed that, like they always do with the big public vote winner. Um... Was it a good song, let's be honest? No. Was it a bit of fun and put a smile on your face? Yes. Is that why it did well? Of course. Um, you know, Zoop to Zoop, one of the biggest bands in Moldova. What can you say? Six. Um, Mahmoud and Blanco, Brividi. Um Was I so disappointed this did well? Yes. Um, this didn't deserve top ten. Especially if you want to look at Mahmoud's history with his songs where he's writing about um, guns and doing shooting off guns. If you really want to look at that in this day and age, going with a certain thing that's happening in the world, I'm not going to mention. Um, yes, I don't think he should have been that high. I thought sorry for Blanco being paired with him. Fifth was Sweden, wasn't it? No, wasn't it? Serbia, Konstreka in Koprisano. Incorporisano, these are brava. Uh, yeah, I mucked it up. <laughs> um, you know, this I thought would finish third. I knew it would do well with the public. It was the juries that I was a bit more worried about. And um, I'm so happy it did well. Just if you listen to the song by itself, it, it would probably finish near the bottom, but it's the staging and everything that goes with it just worked. And that's why it did well. Fourth, 
Now we come to Sweden. Cornelia Jacobs, hold me closer. So disappointed with this. Um, she is a very disrespectful person. If you look at the second semi-final press conference, everyone got three minutes. She took 10 minutes acting like an immature brat, a child who was in preschool, jumping all over the host, actually touched the scroll to pick up, which the host reminded somebody else earlier on in the night, once you've touched it to try and pick it up, that's yours. She did that and was not given a warning for it. That turned out to be the first half. So then she picked up a different one to go to the second half. She should be utterly ashamed of herself with her conduct across the week. Um, I know people said the same about Israel. Yes, I agree. Um, Michael was very disrespectful at times. But why aren't they coming for Cornelia? Because she's from Sweden. That's why. I don't see that as an excuse. She should be utterly ashamed of herself. And hopefully, Melfast never allow her to compete again. Third, Chanel, slow-mo from Spain. Again, I still don't get this hype. Um, this hype, I don't understand. Um, I've never rated this song. I put it 19th, I think, in my rankings for the final. Um, don't understand it. Still don't don't understand why it finished third. Nothing more to say. Second, United Kingdom. Come on, Sam Ryder, Spaceman. Um, I know this year, BBC found their fingers, which were deep up somebody's ass, and pulled them out. And they've chucked everything at it. They've given Sam Ryder the budget to go across Europe to do interviews. Um, they've done... Still, the stadium was okay. I don't think it was great. Um, it was fine. They could have done a bit better. Um, would we have won? Of course, we wouldn't have. Um, in the press this year, they went at it in the UK to change the opinion of people that it's not a political contest. And then we know what happened. Um, Sam Ryder... Hang your head high, boy. Um, you did the UK proud. You are the real winner of Eurovision 2022. Which we then go to Kalush Orchestra with Stefania. I think that the delegation should be utterly ashamed of themselves. Now, I will caveat this with a bit of a speech. Um, do not come for me in the comments. Um, if you get offensive towards me, your comments will be deleted. Like some people did in my preview show. Eurovision and the war in Ukraine are two different issues and just to let you know I did a sweepstake for charities in Ukraine, animal charities mostly. So I am all for Ukraine in their war against Russia. I don't support Russia in any way shape or form. In the contest they should have done in the first interview yes we feel for our brothers and sisters at home in Ukraine we support you but we will not be talking about the war in any other interview we are here for the contest to win a music contest that's what they should have done nip it in the bud but no Kalush Orchestra went down the war route in every single interview so that the issues could not be separated and that brought the contest into disrepute the EBU I've constantly reminded com contestants not to go political. They've banned countries. They've chucked countries out of the contest. They did not do that here. And the EBU should be utterly ashamed of themselves with what they have done over the last six years with Ukraine. Ukraine have been the most political country for the last six years. Um, sending aggravating songs against other nations. Um, their national final being heavily political. And the EBU have allowed it to happen. And that is the major problem. Now, Ukraine have won. Um, you can see that their vote was political. And, you know, that's just brought the contest into disrepute. That will have harmed many countries' views on the contest forever. Now, if you want to send a message to Mr Putin and Russia, you don't do it in a political-free contest. Because now... All those people across Europe who have voted for this song, and you can't say it was for the quality of the song because everyone can agree that it wasn't the best song here. It was political. Um, this contest will never will only be remembered for this. And to send a message, you don't vote for it. 
because now all you've done is put the heavy burden of the financial state of the country onto hosting a contest, which, let's be honest, they can't host. They're not going to be able to put any money into it whatsoever. And if they do, they're taking it out of the war effort. So actually, any vote for this, you could be seen as supporting Russia. And I'll let that hang there. Every vote for Ukraine in this contest would have supported Russia in the long term because they want to host it in a war zone. That's not going to happen. Ukraine will not host 2023. If they do, it will be at the financial burden of the country and will be taking money away from victims of war for the war effort itself. So congratulations for damaging a country even further, Europe, for voting for that song. Um, now, the best outcome for hosts would be Spain because there could be some contention against the United Kingdom for winning with those aggregated scores in the jury vote. Um, you know, I don't care who hosts as long as Ukraine aren't there. Do I feel Ukraine should be part of the top five and in the top six automatically to the final? Yes. Um, just to keep that spirit and continuity with the contest. Do I think it's right they do so? No, I don't. Um, but they, um, President Zelensky has already said they've got money withheld for the contest. Well, why aren't you using that to rebuild your country? Because surely that's more important at this time. Um, we'll only have to find out what happens from here on in. Now, we're at 26 minutes of me recording this video, which will probably be longer with the intro. I do apologise for this massive ramble and my, my review of the contest as a whole um, is I've been very disappointed with the political side of this. It should not have been and should never happen again. And unfortunately, that song could have been up against Waterloo, could have been up against Love Shine a Light and still would have beat it. So what does, that does tell you this was a political edition and that is shameful as this song will be the most point scorer ever um, and that is a shame. Let me know in your comments <laughs> what you feel and I dread these comments. Um, please be nice, these are my opinions. I will respect your opinions, I will argue against your opinions because that's what level-headed people do. Um, just don't get abusive towards me saying I'm thick and anything like that because that's just disrespectful and that is something that I will not be to yourselves. Um, over the next um, couple of months, oh, I will hope to get to 100 subscribers um, so that we can do our live things again for this channel, which I love doing. Um, look back at my, my time videos. They were very good. Um, and I'll be doing my um, favourite top five of every country over the next couple of months as well. Um, restarting that, I hope. But that's it for me now. Thank you, I've been Sam. You've been the audience. That's been a very tired Toby the Beagle. We will see you soon. Goodbye.